if it weren't for the fact that this is based on a on a true story, right? Yeah, you've, so you've heard of this. It's true. Mm-hmm. Guy named uh, Leo Sharp, who I think the car- God, I damn. know. <laughs> I think the cartel thought he was an actual mule. <laughs> 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 You have Clint Eastwood, who says, you know, this this possibly might be my last movie. After my last, last movie. Yeah, after my, but he's like, no, I think I'm actually going to die after this. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I, and I mean, look, I'm talking with much respect, because I do have a lot of respect for Clint Eastwood, man. Clint Eastwood, now say what you will about his politics, but this man, his work ethic is amazing. Oh, yeah. I don't even, see, I don't even know if you could say it's his work ethic. His work ethic, this is passion for filmmaking, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this dude about 90 now? Yeah, I would think so. 90 years old, man. Uh, damn near close to it. And still directing movies, man. As uh, as youthful as any other young person out there. And this movie that he has right here. It's a funny one if it is if it's, if it is, is, is indeed his last one. It's kind of a curious one to, to end on. Although I can see how he could be drawn to this. Uh, this deals the... Old war vet who, after spending most of his life kind of shirking his responsibilities to his family, finally finds that the the life that he was living kind of selfishly is gone, man. Internet and just came in, took all that shit. Oh, damn. Yeah, he he was a dude who loved, he was growing lilies and he was going to, (laughs) man, it's crazy because he was going to like flower conventions Uh where people were just treating him like a celebrity. Uh-huh. Yeah, women just throwing their panties up on stage. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah, okay. No, okay. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but the, the, the he go these flower, metaphorically. Metaphorically, man. They, they, man, well, even that ain't fuck yeah, man. He had flower groupies. Uh huh. You know, he they and he would he would uh, spend his time just living his own life instead of doing what he wants to do or needs to do with his family, even as adults. And then one day when he loses that to the internet because he doesn't know how to do the internet, doesn't know how to sell these flowers on the internet, and business just came. You know, other people doing it on the internet just came in and took his business away. Houses foreclosed, paid those last three Mexicans what he could pay them, uh-huh. and uh, riding around that old rat ass truck and think he was, and thought he was gonna be able to like kind of ride off the graces of his granddaughter until that wife showed up and said, "Nah, nah, you are not gonna do this to another generation of the family coming around here when you need something. Get the fuck out of here with that." And so now he has to find a source of income. Just so happens that there's a cartel member at his <laughs> at, at his at his granddaughter's get together at a barbecue, or somebody who's very close with the cartel, and says, "Hey, old man, look here, I like I like you. You know, and I saw what that saw what that woman did to you, man. That, 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 that wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. Look, you need some money." I, uh, I heard it's like got, run this cross street for me right yeah, quick. Yeah, make five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> man, I heard you got a good driving record. You know, we we need delivery boys like you. <laughs> and they get him into being a drug mule for the cartel. And it's supposed to be one run, but of course, as these stories go, once you get the first taste of that big money, can't stop. Yeah, one run turns into two, three, and then sixty. Let's go ahead and take a look. At Clint Eastwood as the title character, the mule, and then we'll be back with my review. Need help, sir? <laughs> oh. Yeah, could you help me snort all this? <laughs> for what it's worth, I'm sorry for everything. You know, in these movies, that was cool you, as shit. Yeah, no, it's a, it's an interesting story. Now, you know, and in, in, as you see in all these movies, uh, you also have the the person that's on their tail. That's uh that's going after them, and then here that would be somebody that Clint Eastwood has worked with before. Somebody that actually helped boost his career very much. Bradley Cooper, yeah, they had him in an American <coughs> Sniper, and also Michael Pena is pretty good in this too. Some good, uh, it's some good actors in here, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a, in a little while. While why uh, you have good actors in here and good performances, but the thing with Clint Eastwood in this character that he plays <coughs> is that. He wants this character to be so likable and when he hardly gives you a reason to like this guy. Now, as you saw from the trailer and, and, and from what I described to you, this is not a good guy at all. You know, this guy is he's, he's actually a, a, he's an asshole, man. Uh, when he's at that flower convention that I was telling you about, you know, getting all this adoration from uh, from all these flower groupies and hoes. Out there, uh-huh. You know, he's he <laughs> his daughter is getting married 
and he, he could give a fuck less. Oh, really? <laughs> like, how do you double book on your daughter's on your daughter's wedding? He'd rather be at this cheap ass, rinky dink ass hotel convention uh-huh. while his daughter, not his stepdaughter, not, not not you know, not not a not adopted daughter, but his real daughter is getting married. And nowhere to be seen. In fact, he's even in the bar drinking while his daughter is over there crying for her wedding. He's at the bar around for everybody. (laughs) And he's supposed to be paying for that wedding? He you know what? Uh no. (laughs) Well, yeah, he's supposed to. Yeah. But he wasn't there. And they even at the bar when he was there, they like they have a a bridal shower going on. And uh and he and, and the He's bartenders. Like, that, that reminds me. Of yeah, something. the bar, that's where the bartender is like. Would you want to you want to get one from them too? And he looks at him. He's like, yeah, yeah. And he looks at him. like, you know, I think I'm forgetting something. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Hey, the flower man is here. <laughs> oh, no, it, it is. Wow, man. And he gets called out. Diane Weist is his. Uh, is is his is his ex wife, and uh, and the mother of his of, of his child, and there are moments in the movie where she is talking shit about him and calls him out, and you feel bad because she calls him out at times when it could ruin somebody else's occasion, but you you but you sit there and you say, man, I cannot disagree with a word you uh-huh. are saying. You are so right, and and she she goes through about how this has been affecting her their whole life her and his children and it doesn't help that when that when uh she does call him out he walks away and he's like fucking bitch bitch <laughs> it's like see this is wrong with you man you don't want to listen you know it and at times you do you do like him because he is a you know that's the, that's the thing with Clint Eastwood he's a good enough performer and he's that he's a natural enough performer to where you know, it's uh, the the character. He, he you know he he realizes the challenge is to make you like a character that is so unlikable in spite like of him. Everything. In spite, and he is like that. He's, you know, he's a, he, his problem is that he will help a stranger, he will help a friend, he just can't help his family because the family is too much of a commitment. Ah, uh, it, yeah, you know, he because helping friends gets adoration from your friends. You know, uh, um, you know, helping uh, uh, helping a stranger that's quick. He'll stop on the road and. And uh, help a stranger, and he'll still he'll still do this thing where you know, like the 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 old crotchety guy or the racist guy, the kind of uh-huh. racist guy will come out, but it's like oh well, he just doesn't understand, uh-huh. you know, he doesn't get it, he's old, and that is my problem with the uh, with, with with the kind of character that he is in love with these days. Yeah, he wants to be, you know, he wants he he is that guy who, despite all of the the awkward and racist things that he says, he's that PC character that you got to love because, well, he gets a pass because he's old. Mm-hmm. You know, that goes back. And not only is he old, but he, in this movie, the same thing happens. Not as much as you see in this other movie. He's a softer version of the character he played in. Gran Torino. In Gran Torino. <laughs> come here, girl. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with? Are you crazy, man? Get out of here, man. You know, and that is my problem with that. It's like, listen, Gran Torino, it's a good movie. It's a well-directed film. But my whole problem was he is still doing what he did from the Dirty Harry, Dirty Harry era, mm-hmm. which is you notice that he, he he knows the crowd that he's playing to. Now, don't make no mistake. He knows that old conservative people likes his ass. And he's and he played straight to them. He showed them, if you look at this 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 trailer right here, uh, you know, first thing he showed you, a, a, a pack a black dude, a pack of niggers, a pack of that's Mel Gibson once said, a pack of niggers, <laughs> yeah, messing with a girl, and he here comes the white savior. Uh-huh. <laughs> he played that. That's imagery. Even though I'm a you know, I'm a good racist, oh, you got to forgive me because I'm just a product of my time. He knows that that scary image played to his audience. Sure, and I'm glad to say that that's not what is really going in this movie. He is a softer version of what okay. happens. He's more, is, you know, he's not exactly as racist as he, as he is. Just kind of really a product of his time and just kind of ignorant about things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you kind of forgive him for the, those things, even though with his family is hard to do. And that's what I'm saying when he wants to, cause he just, he's really pushing for it. It'd be one thing to sit back and say, all right, listen, look, uh, you just have to accept this guy for what he is or don't, you know, he, he speaks for himself, but he really pushes for this character to be charming, 
because that's what he's working here, man. He's working charm. There's a moment in here where characters who despise him. Oh, just takes a moment of me sitting down and flashing a smile real quick, my old ass, and touching a hand, and everything's cool. And it's like, no. <laughs> All the shit you set up before the baggage we had before this film, all of a sudden you were supposed to like this guy because he smiles and says something charming. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, man. And that's the problem with this movie. It's a lot of inconsistency going on hmm. with uh, with uh, with this character. As far as okay, how much are you asking us to accept this guy? And how much are you manipulating us into light into thinking that he's a cool guy? Gotcha. To trying to get sympathy for some guy who does not deserve it. Everything this guy gets, he deserves, man. Okay, because I I know when I I watch a movie w- with a character that they're they're really forcing to make mm-hmm. the likable hero despite everything yeah. that they've done. Hey, if it works, it works. But the time it doesn't work, I get super annoyed with the movie. It's enough to make me hate a movie. I, you know, and it, I get the same when I. It, sometimes it doesn't push me to hate a movie, but it really does frustrate me because a lot of times when they do that, it's probably not in the hands of somebody who's as good a director as sure, Clint Eastwood. Sure. As far as directing goes, y'all heard me. It's like I don't always like his material. He's kind of like the same area of uh, of Tyler Perry for me. You know, these are guys who I really admire for you know the work that they do, their, their, their work ethic, or the stuff that they do to really be successful as they are, or their passion to just do what they're doing. And like I said, uh, Clint Eastwood, is one, as far as filmmaking goes, I think this guy is almost a hero to me from a creative standpoint. But this character that he's playing in here is not only an asshole, not only is frustrating, but it gets to the point where he's just stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will you, it's one thing to take this character who is kind of old, non-PC, maybe slightly racist, you know, likable racist. Uh-huh. You know, hey, I'm going to call you a nigga, but you just got to accept it, right? Because I'm old. <laughs> but I still like you, man. <laughs> you know, I know times. But I good. call everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I even call white people. Then, <laughs> yeah. So you, can't get, you can't get mad. <laughs> times have changed, but not me. <laughs> I'll deal with you. But, you know, some things is going to be what they are. And, and that's, what, that's what happens here, man. It's one thing to have him deal with regular folks, even thugs on the street and pull that shit. When you pulling that with the cartel, your ass is dead. Yeah. No, none of this movie shit, Ray, because he's trying to pull that with the cartel. Oh, with the flash of the he, smile? He, yeah, he said, yeah, it's in the pit. No, talking shit to the cartel. Like, oh. he pulls up. Like, when you're working for the cartel, you know, he just becomes stupid, man. He is surly. He's, the, and he's trying to pull that old, that old thing of like, uh, you, you ain't going to tell me what to do. <laughs> you know, they tell, <laughs> they tell him, look, old man, because they get serious after a while. They just like, look, look, we tell you to do something. You do it. You don't stop. You keep on the road. You don't pull over. You don't. You don't make a turn. You don't. You don't talk to anybody. And he's like, "Well, I want to get a pork sandwich. I get a pork sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> and what does the cartel do instead of capping it? Like, oh, <laughs> this old guy. <laughs> what are we gonna do with this old guy? <laughs> mm, those meals. <laughs> Oh, little, little pop, pop, papi, <laughs> El tata. <laughs> well, everybody in the, in the cartel can't be hard. There gotta be some soft touches in there. <laughs> it, you know what? That that, that is. I, I will say this: that look, that is unbelievable. Because there's 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 one dude. Uh, you have. Uh, I don't even know if uh, you see him in the trailer, but uh, uh, there he is. And you don't see his face, but uh, what's his name? Uh, He's in everything, man. He he was he he, he was uh, uh Andy Garcia. Oh, okay. Andy Garcia plays a cart a cartel head, and he's like, hey, he does his job. Uh, leave puppy alone. Let him do what he wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, they it's almost like a cartoon. They gave him a handler. Uh, they gave him a guy that needs to watch him. They say, hey, look, you know, he's becoming so good. Just 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 watch what he's doing. And uh, I like I actually like the guy that they have playing his handler. Uh, it's the guy. Let me see here. It's a. It's a guy named uh, Ignacio Ignacio Sardicio. And it's it's almost it almost gets to a comedy because he's just kind of like, look. I'm gonna kill this old man. I can't keep doing this. He doesn't listen. He doesn't do what I tell him to do. And then and Andy Garcia's like, ah, oh, just leave him alone. I'm the nice cartel guy. <laughs> 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 
and uh and, and, and so I, I don't I mean from the beginning this whole thing with the cartel and him and the relationship they have this sitcom relationship they have not too convincing because it is playing for a moment to, for a movie that's trying to be a drama it's playing off like you know um Chico and the man. Chico and the Chico and the cartel <laughs> no, Chico yeah Chico and the man yeah cartel and the man <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. This is this, it's kind of ridiculous. And they keep saying, and they keep using an excuse. Oh, he 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 has no problems. He has no bad driving record. He does his job. He's he's very good at it. And he's old. And it's like, yes, he's old. And like this this dude could drop behind the wheel at any moment. <laughs> and the thing is, he's so stupid because they tell him they say, now look. <laughs> they tell it. They tell his ass at the beginning. They say, "Now look here, old man. You need to worry about what's in this bag. You just drive, do the drop, look in the glove compartment for your money, and come back home. That's it. Easy money." It takes all, it, his second trip. He's like, "Oh, okay. I got to see what's in this bag." I don't know. He does exactly the opposite of what they tell him. And he, when he opens up the bag, you know, he's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Cocaine. And it's like, what did he think was in there? You're working for the fucking cartel. What did you think is going to be in there? <laughs> I just thought it'd be his pinatas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this. What the fuck you thought was going to be in there? Tor- tortillas? What the hell you thought? <laughs> the fuck is that? It's like eating. Look, man, you 90 years old. There's no excuse for you not to know. You watch Fox News. You They talk shit about the cartel all the time. And everybody's seen Breaking Bad at this point. Yeah. <laughs> he opened that shit up. He's like, oh my God. What the fuck? You doing illegal shit. You didn't think there was not that, that there wasn't drugs in that bag. <laughs> it's just when he recoils in horror. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker! What you think was in that bag? Uh, you know, and it would almost be hard to believe it if it weren't for the fact that this is based on a on a true story. Right. Yeah. You've, so you've heard of this? It's true. Mm-hmm. Guy named uh, Leo Sharp, who I think the yeah, car- I know. <laughs> I think the cartel thought he was an actual mule. <laughs> well, he can't snort the product with all that hair on his nose. <laughs> well, that means he gets... Yeah, I'm, it's just none of it's getting in. I'm sorry. He, he gets that filtered cocaine. <laughs> Jesus, that dude got an afro cut on his nostrils. It's like a troll is sticking. You know those troll dolls? It's Man, like the- <laughs> you, you know, it's funny how whenever they, they do a Hollywood biopic, they always get... Actors and actresses who who pretty up the people, the real people, and you see Clint Eastwood at ninety years old. You're like, all right, well they didn't do this guy any favors. Until yeah. you see the real guy, you're like, yeah. oh yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, you see ninety year old cool right here, and you see him. <laughs> <laughs> you see the ghost of Christmas past come up. And sh- <laughs> God damn, yeah, bro. man. <laughs> they tied his ass up in a barn. <laughs> Put the mule back in the barn. <laughs> El Boro. <laughs> yeah, this, this summer we're using <laughs> human mule hybrids. <laughs> <laughs> Try to change things up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he went by El Tata. He uh, he was working for the Sinaloa cartel, and he got busted in 2011. And I don't I, now. I didn't know this until after the movie. So I will say that I'm going to follow up on this story when it's done. Because if one thing the movie did for me, <coughs> it introduced me to this man's story right here. And I'm really curious to see what it's like. And just see, I mean, because, you know, sometimes truth is stranger than, stranger than fiction. Sure. Every, you know, what you see in this movie and all the things that I'm complaining about might actually be something that happened in this man's story. But I, I, I would say that the way it's presented is just, <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, young fella. <laughs> you know, his dumb ass, but they make it look. I don't know. All these Mexicans put this flower in the back, huh? I think they're baking, they're baking pies or something. Huh? I don't know. You want to help me out, young man? <laughs> uh, sir. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Uh, one of the things that is cool with the movie is that I like the way that he, now I'm not saying that this is a good thing. I'm not trying to, you know, um, I'm not trying to make any kind of moral judgment on the cartel. I'm not trying to defend the cartel, but I do like in the movie the way that he humanizes the cartel. 
you know, uh, like the the lower level guys that he deals with. He he's coming back so many times that you know they're not treated like villains in the movie. Yeah, like if you're working for people like this, you know, they introduce them as scary Mexicans at first, but then. He gets to know them and they're actually really patient with him because they're like, they, you know how to text, do you? And they're like, okay, let me sit down and show you how to do this. He comes in like, hey, how's your nephew doing? I'm like, hey, thanks for asking, man. It seems like regardless of what you think about the morality of these uh, of the cartel and the people that work for them, if you're close with people like this at a certain level, you you feel like you would get to a point where you would, sure. they would be human to you right, like right. this. It's like you're not going to just stand there and scowl the whole time, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things I liked about it. Like some of the guys, and I like the – and his handler, I like the way he's kind of putting uh, the handler is kind of put into a, a little, a little uh, uh, uneasy position because they don't they don't play it as sweet natured as I thought they would, which would have been bad. Uh, you could tell that the handler is actually starting to kind of care for this guy, but because of his position, he can't do it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't play out in a way that feels like it's false. Like they become friends, and it's like, hey, Chico, whatever. Hey, you got you got to get out of this racket, son. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get your life straight. <laughs> you know, you got. You gotta find your passion. Besides this, you got you got more going for you. <laughs> you know they don't they don't play it out like that. They, you know uh, they it's it's uh, that was a good place where I thought the writing excelled uh, even even more than his own character. Uh, they just uh, what it is is that they want you to have re- you know they, they they want they want to make some redemption for this character and they want you to feel sympathy for him so you buy that redemption at the end of this movie. And it's yeah. like no nah. no. Nah. No, nah, you tried to actually steer this in another way, and I grabbed that fucking wheel, and I was like, hell no, he going down that road. No, no, this guy is not, a, the way he's presented, he's not a sympathetic character, sympathetic character. So this redemption that he has, it's like, that's not redemption. You got what was coming to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's nothing redeemable about this, man. Uh, I, but I was, I, I'm, I'm amazed at Cleaning's was direction. I mean, you know, now he's got a lot of Hollywood on his side to make it to make his films look good. Sure. But it does take a certain artistic directions to make the decisions of what you want out of your movie. And one of the things that Clint Eastwood has always done, and he's been able to do even with his bigger budgets, is know when to strip back on a lot of things and center on character and actors. He's an, a lot of people love working with, with Clint Eastwood because he's an actor's director. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to push you to do what you need to do. You're a professional. You got leeway to treat this character like you want to. Uh, you know, I, I I want you to try different things. Uh, I want and I want to center on you as a believable character. Um, a lot of lot, a lot of things are stripped back in this movie. There's no music except for the music that they play that he's listening to or a song that comes up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a you know it's a it's a well produced film. Nice. It's, it's it's shot well. But again, you know it's uh, it feels like even with the, uh, the production that's being as nice and, uh, and, and you, can still, you can tell the money's there, everything seems a little stripped back to where things feel real. I, you know, I, I really like his, uh, as far as, you know, with all of his movies, even the ones he experiments with and they're not always that, that good, I've always liked what he's done with actors. Sure. And that's, his, t- that's still his strongest point to, to this day. After, you know, and I, it almost makes me want to say, I would like to see him go out not with this movie. I want to see him go out with another movie with, uh, you know, a... Uh, 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 actors who were not there for their name, but actors who were good. Yeah, with a great story, and I want to see him make one more movie. You know, before he's done, man, because this one is not a strong one to go well, out he keeps, on. He keeps saying he's done. Has he? Has he said this is the last one? He's that's that's been said. But did he make two movies this yeah. year? Ninety uh, year old man made two movies. Two movies this year. He made that one about the guys on the train. The guys. Oh, that, that's right. That he didn't. You know, yeah. he's so much in the actors. I guess it's the one time I didn't work because he's so much in the letting actors be actors and, be, and feel yeah, real. And, and, and he, he took people the, who couldn't the real act. Guys, yeah. And they said, "Yeah, this, you actors can't act." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I would. This is not the one, man. Mm. Uh, this is. This is uh, uh you know it's, it's even the stuff that's played out with the DEA, it's played out very very uh, uh, rudimentary like every other movie. Uh, when Bradley Cooper comes in, you know. You got to make a name for yourself. You and Lawrence Fishburne is just a shy away from being like the black police chief. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, he's not yelling anything, but it's like, oh, what you got for me? You got to get, you got to get an arrest. You got to get a win if you want to make a name for yourself around here. And that's all that character is there generic. for, man. It's very generic. Yeah, it's, it's just not a. It's not that. It's a great story, just not a great, just not a well written script. I don't think. Uh, and when I say that, I don't mean it's, it's terrible, but this should something like this should have been way more interesting. 
Huh. You so know. it's funny because reading what this was and all the circumstances around it, my fear was that it was going to be uh, another old man with the gun. And then as you start talking about it, I was like, oh, it's not. It's something else. But now as you're coming on the back end of it, it's like, okay, now it's starting to sound similar again. It's not the old man with the gun because he has the gun pointed at him most of the time. Right, although, right. I know it's not the same story. Yeah, although it, tur- I will say what I, I can't say it without spoiling anything, so I would just say it does turn into what you're thinking by the time we get to the end. Yeah, where it's like, hey, this guy's a criminal, but we're trying to make him seem like a, like a charming guy and you just root for him the whole time. Yep. It's like, well, okay, if you want to put the camera at this angle, but I'm looking at all the angles and I, I don't think this plays out the way you're making it look no not, not no, for everybody no they were twisting I, this thing. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a lot of people who enjoy getting robbed by uh, uh, getting robbed at their job whether the guy smiled and was charming or not yeah yeah well i know what movie you're talking about yeah. still like that movie <laughs> but, <laughs> but no this right here it's not it's not you know again um it's something that's not bad it's a rental it's a rental mm. yeah and it's it's mm. not you know and it's a good rental i i I, I did not. It's not that I didn't enjoy watching it. I did. I just, and, and you know, when I like I said, I found it very interesting. I'm not even saying it's you know. I wasn't even. I wasn't even bored in this. I was. I was drawn in the whole time. Yeah. It's just I could pick out certain areas where I was like, that could be so much better, and I'm not buying this right here. And this character that you're trying to like twist around some ways, I don't feel like this is authentic. Yeah. Okay. I guess because because the way you were talking about it toward the middle, I was like, well, dang, why didn't they give us a screening for it? But as you continue to go on, it's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it, and everybody thinks that Clint Eastwood, especially when the movie comes out like this time of year, is going to be that Oscar thing, you know, that that Oscar movie, uh, the one that's a sh- uh, it's a safe bet as Oscar mm-hmm. bait, but it's nah, nah, it's not. It's an it's, it's an enjoyable movie, but I just think it's better enjoyed at home for all the flaws that it has. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I hope this man can just he, he can get one more, one more, just one more, just, can, just one just, more American he, sniper in there. Yeah, just squeeze one more. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. And that's oh, that was the other. They tried to make him a badass by the end of the movie too. Really? Yeah, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, no. Nah, it's a point in your life where you can get your old ass beat. You try to put it on, you point that thing at the wrong person, <laughs> end up missing that arm. <laughs> yeah, no, that's some Fox News shit right there. Yeah. That's, that's a Fox fantasy, all right. Mm-hmm. The thing he did at the end of this movie. I don't even know if it's true what he did at the end of this movie. I think they changed that around a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, sometimes you, know, you have to. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see if there's actually, uh, like we said, if we can just squeeze one more. Uh... Damn, that dude. Look at, <laughs> Ooh. Look at you still sitting there. You love us. You know you do. Go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel right here. You want more of us? Go over to DoubleToasted.com where you can not only find a longer form version of this video right here, but all of the live streams that we do almost every night of the week. Support us over at DTMerch.com. Get a shirt. Show everybody you're toasty. And if nothing else, stay toasty.